And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you from Westlake Village, California. It is Thursday, but it feels like Monday. I hope you had a great 4th of July. Ate some good barbecue, enjoyed your family. And uh, let's jump into the markets right now as Bitcoin is forming a nice little ascending triangle on the four hour time frame. And what is an ascending triangle? Well, it's when the price is making higher lows uh, alongside a pair of at least um, even highs. So ascending triangles technically are more likely to break out to the upside. Where could you get a measure move target on this one if it does break to the upside or the downside? Well, to the upside, we're looking at uh, 32,500 and to the downside, the purple 200 coming in there, call it 28 or 29,000. To the downside and that is the four hour range and what else do i see here volatility is kind of in no man's land and uh you know perhaps the downside has played out um but uh will not momentum will not cross back to the upside until bitcoin gets back above thirty thousand eight nineteen specifically so we've got some uh work to do at the moment and <clears throat> what else is Let's just take a look at some of the underlying market dynamics. Currently, the open interest coming at 9.6 billion. So we want to see that tick back up for price action to continue onwards and upwards. You've got uh, funding rates coming in at not point not not eight percent, which is inconsequential. And then you've got the leverage ratio, which is slightly ticking down. So interest in the market coming down and the fear and greed index. And I don't imagine a local you know, major high gets put in until we get into the extremely greedy zone, which if you look at the all time, um, that is going to be when uh, you know generally we're over 70 or 80 percent. And currently we're coming in at a 61 so another point for the bulls there we've got a lot of economic data coming out in the next couple of days like i said fomc minutes today tomorrow's uh, adp unemployment change jobless claims smp <laughs> smp global services and the jolson ism uh, manufacturing number so what does this mean well uh it's we're gonna see if the market is really uh heating up with inflation or coming down if uh, the, the, the same narrative continues to play out, which is a strong dollar is weak risk assets. So the dollar is trying to put in a major bounce off the 0.5 and the 618, this green box here. Upside target is still in this area and is gonna be valid as long as we're closing dailies above 102.75, we start to break that region. Well. We could come back down and it would be a little bit more of a point for the bulls there. So what am I trying to say? You know, the Fed is talking about two more rate hikes this year. There's a potential recession coming in Q4 or Q1 of next year. So we've got the summer to play, the summer to have bullish momentum. And as long as the NASDAQ is essentially, um, you know, closing dailies, uh, really, You know, really, it, it can it can pull back uh, and still be in a nice little uptrend on the weekly. You know, weekly as long as we're, you know, really above this green 55 at 13,200, um, you would expect price action to continue continue onwards and upwards, and that would be another point for the bulls. But temporarily, it does look like Nasdaq wants to finally pull back a little bit. Uh, we'll see if uh, Powell comes out and has some bearish news or some bearish sentiment for the market. Uh, checking in on the S&P 500, um, you know, good potential double top there. And you will have bearish divergence to drive variety at the minimum. Wit, or is it going to be three? Yes, uh, it will be one, two, three, apparently. Let's see how many higher highs above this high. We got one, two, three, four, potentially. And I'd be looking for a correction down actually to fill the gap here on S&P. And if we close anywhere here or lower on the S&P 500 today, and I will just put in a little green box for a target there. Uh, that's it for Mr. S&P. 
And that would be a point for the bears. When the stock market goes down, typically risk assets like Bitcoin uh, tend to go with it. And uh, did, yeah, so we got the four hour range. Uh, do I want to speak about anything else? I guess I will check in on the three day volatility expansion. We talked about this. Once this got over 25%, um, that was going to initiate a 50%, 40 to 50% move after being contracted for some time. We're 26% into this move. So 40% takes us up to 35,000. 50% takes us up to 37,000. And where does the invalidation take place? Well, on the three day time frame specifically, um, yeah, anywhere, you know, kind of back below this 382 or this box at 27,500. And I would call it invalidation from there. Um, let's see what else. And what else does that line up with really quick here if we use our little FID tool? That's 35 and 42,000. Yep, 35 and 42,000. The next uh, direct targets. And I do imagine a bit of a sideways consolidation. This is a holiday week for most people. Take the week off. Most of the professional traders out there are going to be enjoying time with their family, getting that day in. It's like a it's like a long drawn out holiday for some out there. Anyways, uh, long story short, total market cap uh, is coming down as well. Getting rejected off the purple 200. I wouldn't mind a little bit more consolidation in this area uh, for total and then tether dominance uh, holding this trend line for a bounce. If we do close back above seven and a half percent, that'll confirm that as a local low and a few drives of hidden bullish divergence. And I'd be looking for a run back up here and overall a squashing of the altcoin market as some of them have been quite strong alongside Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin dominance putting in, it looks like, well, not, not quite a top yet. So we haven't lost the nine or the 21 exponential moving average. So this could be, you know, rally onwards and upwards from here. Our next target on Bitcoin dominance, 54%. That's a point for the Bitcoin bulls and overall 63%. And we'll be looking for reversals in those two areas. And then lastly, following up on ETH Bitcoin, did put in a little bit of a, uh, you know, a bounce back into the range here of, you know, uh, above that 0.0625. And we did say this, that uh, likely target is the green 55 on this bounce. If it really gets going up here, that would play bullish for altcoins. If ETH Bitcoin goes up, that means typically altcoins are going to be outperforming Bitcoin. Um, so, and that has not been the case as of late. And this does look like it wants to have a bit more consolidation sideways and down, and that would provide the impetus for Bitcoin dominance con to continue to go higher. So I think the, the main takeaways from today is really this four hour range. We wanna see a break of this range on the four hour time frame to kind of get the next little uh, move or potential higher low. If you're more conservative, you're gonna wait for a break of this range here. Uh, those two wicks, and that would be a candle body closure above or below this area is probably going to get us that next move to the 1618 FIB. If you want to uh, learn how to trade and um, join our Growing Your Crypto Wealth Trading Program, I would highly recommend you check this out. Bitcoin 101, How to Grow Your Crypto Wealth. You just go to the site. There is a link in the description below. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Have yourself a blessed and highly favored day. Take care.